Okay. Oh. Are you going to edit this? This is literally just going to go straight from oh iPhone my. to Roger, online. Roger, you're not in it. I'm, I'm right there. Really? Yeah. I'm more in See, it. See, watch. Hi. Hi. Hey, brothers and sisters. This is Cameron, and I'm here with the lovely Karen Bentley and Roger Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> what did we, what did we end up, what happened this weekend? We had the Apostle Fest. We love it. 2019. Everybody's normal. Nobody's, <laughs> well, we are kind of crazy, but it's normal people. You fall in love. You actually have such a great time. It's great group therapy. I, I think that was like my first time when I came. I was like, oh my God, you know, there's all these people that are just like me and they all have right. the similar like terminology and the stories and they understand the language of where we came from. Um, but how did you guys hear about Apostrophes? Because you were going before I did. I think we were reading uh, a blog, JW Net, and uh, Flipper, that's his, um, why, how he relates, and he would invite people to Tahoe, so we, that's how we first heard about it, mm -hmm. was on the JW Net, and so we came up and tried it out the first year. And the first year we came, we said, okay, okay, if these people are weird, let's just say, oh, I'm so tired, or I need to go to work, or um, we have a reservation, and we got to go, because we didn't know what to expect. You were, you had to have a backup plan, in case we these people are plan. weird, Yeah, we have an evacuation and plan. a big plan, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's funny, and then it ended up being... Awesome. We met some of the best people, made some of the best friends, even though they won't say my name right. Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's how we met, actually, was because of the Apostle Fest, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I met Cameron at the Apostle Fest. Yeah, I was and... also worried. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you have an escape plan? Right. Yeah, I was like, oh, I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I better get going. Mm. Uh, but I didn't need that excuse because it ended up being, like you said, really cool people. Well, we've made some friends and uh, very good people, very nice people, shared common experience. Validating is a good word. But I think we have lifelong friends as a result of coming here. Mm -hmm. And you're one of them, buddy. Yeah. We're family now. Like, <laughs> yeah. You can't get rid of me now. That's Good, right. bad, or worse. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, I, was, I was really thankful to, to meet you guys because when I met you, and I was, I was really impressed with your story, which I want to talk about briefly because there's so many new YouTubers and yeah. more people are on, on Reddit now. There's, there's all these new flooded people that are waking up. They may not be familiar with, um, with the stories. And... Um, I want to briefly touch up with that, but I was really excited when I met you guys and heard about what you were doing. I was like, oh my God, you have to meet so-and-so, our incognito contact that's helping us with the Bill SB360. Um, if it's your first time hearing about it, it's, it's our first go around at really putting a, a fist up in the air to all cults of hiding child abuse. We found out the clauses they were using clergy penitent privilege of hiding either a victim coming forward or in the rare case of, a, of an abuser coming forward and saying, hey, I did this, that you can't, because they're mandated reporters, you can't keep hiding this under clergy penitent privilege. You just need to do the right thing and report it and provide resources and help people instead of victimize them. So that's, that's kind of how it all started was through just meetups. Mm -hmm. And I think we all wanted to do more. Well, we had a, a experience with a child abuse case. We got heavily involved in that. Mm -hmm. But then there was the Australian Royal Commission, and part of their recommendation was to eliminate what's known as clergy penitent privilege. Just completely get rid of it, which would mean there would be no legal basis for clergy to cover up child sex abuse. So our um, whole cause was very heavily influenced by the amount of money and time that the Australian government saw fit to put into this issue. And what's nice about the Australian Royal Commission is the amount of literature, uh, academic papers, and as in our point of view, the, the good that can come from the Australian Royal Commission hasn't been realized yet. Uh, people still need to get familiar with what they did, how they approached it. And even in Australia, they've taken a study and they're trying to implement it legally. Well, here in California and hopefully across the country, we're going to try to do the same thing. And if you go to our website, scars.org, you'll see that we use a lot of the um, academic papers and the thoughts that have been generated not only by the Australian Royal Commission, but other academics and other people who've been looking into this problem. And you'll, you'll see that it's not one religion, it's not one corporation, it's a cultural 
change that has to take place. But we're so grateful that we find so many other people from all these varieties of um, approach that they're all working on the same goal to protect children, to uh, create a, a public safe environment. And so we're very encouraged. We, we met a lot of uh, human beings at the Capitol, people that are passionate just like us, their family members, and we couldn't be more optimistic about the outcome of this. We really feel the momentum is gonna continue to grow as we go forward publicizing what's been happening with child abuse victims. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're primarily it. We're the media company talking about this mm -hmm. from step A to Z. Um, now, the, the case that you had mentioned, um, some of my followers may not be familiar with because I don't think, I mean, you've briefly been on my channel a few times um, with, with what happened to you guys. I was blown away by your story when I first met you. Um, can we briefly talk about that? Like, were you, you were both, uh, your background and then leading up to that case. Okay, well, one thing we like about talking to legislators and the public is that we like to refer them to the, um, places they can go to do further research. And fortunately, uh, Reveal News, Trade Monday, did extensive reporting on Jehovah's Witnesses and how they were hiding child sex abuse. So what happened, you can go to that uh, website, look out uh, at how the Watchtower, um, their, the, what Trey featured, and you can read in detail um, all about this. But basically, the uh, Jonathan Kendrick, the person that was sued by Candace Connie, before all that trial started, Jonathan Kennedy moved from Fremont, maybe went to another congregation or two, but he ended up in Oakley. And then despite us having com contacted Fremont, we weren't warned about Jonathan's background. In fact, the letter said that he was good with children, and I'm actually reading that letter on the PBS uh, special. So, and you were the elder at Oakley. Oh, I yeah. was the elder that was very much involved with Jonathan in, in many aspects. And so in the circumstances when I began to read the trial transcripts from the Candace Connie case, I realized that my history and what I knew had taken place was not being presented accurately in that, that trial. So the family of the victim in our congregation his parents, her parents, and how that all turned out, they started a lawsuit. Now that lawsuit was uh, didn't get past summary judgment because the abuse didn't take place in conjunction with a theocratic activity or a church-sponsored activity. So the case was dismissed, but we've still been trying to publicize the flawed policy, the child abuse policy of Jehovah's Witnesses, and it's blossomed into all institutions. And again, that's where the Australian Royal Commission was so valuable because they studied, I think it was 59 institutions and scholars and, and all their work came out with some very specific recommendations. So we feel that it's an international um, problem and the people working to solve it are international. So we think that this cause is just gonna continue to grow as these different groups, these different independent groups come together and say, oh, well, we're working on that too. It's similar. And that's kind of like how we met and how we ended up working with CCLA. Because mm -hmm. um, Cameron came to the Apostle Fest mm -hmm. and he came with Cliff the Fifth. And Cliff Who's the Fifth- Who's from our area. We yeah. knew him growing up. Isn't that crazy? It was, it was so interesting. So we were comparing notes. Cliff had remembered me giving talks as an elder. And then he introduced us to Cameron and we're going to the Capitol to lobby for um, a clergy penitent bill to limit it or to completely eliminate it. And Cameron says he's working with a similar group. In fact, his group has more experience lobbying than we did. I'm, we only did it for one year. And your group was six years already? Six or seven. Six yeah. or seven years. So it's like match made in heaven, right? Yeah. The universe has said, you guys need to get together. Yeah. And it really was a good, a good um, thing that we did because we've learned quite a bit from the experience of the paralegals and lobbyists, and what else can we say good about CCLA and, and all the hard work that they've been doing? Well, I mean, all of them are law students now, so like they're, and we've got ex-Mormons, ex-JWs that are law students that are, they know what it feels like. So that combined experience and passion of just trying to do the right thing, I think is really shining. Yeah, and like any individuals, we find that people have so much passion about that this that at times they really disagree with how this should happen. 
But out of those disagreements, because there is a strong motivation to end child sex abuse, those different opinions and different approaches are always, um, we got past them and we come back stronger because we find out that um, no matter what the difference of opinion is, the unity in trying to get this issue settled always comes through and we go forward. So we're very happy to um, be working on next season, but also one of our big projects now is to get the media to present the child sex abuse survivor's point of view. It's not, it's not about feeling sorry for a priest that's getting caught up between uh, God and, and the state. That's a, really a misdirection in my opinion. It's really about the churches have First Amendment rights, but what about the rights of the child abuse victims? And what about the uh, public safety? And we're finding human beings at the Capitol, you know, contrary to the way we were taught in our insular institution that they were uh, being ruled by Satan, that we found that not to be true. And we found out that they have families and sons and daughters, husbands, wives, and they're very interested in protecting the public. And that's why we had 35 out of 40 senators vote in favor of SB 6360, which the media should be covering. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try to get that word out. And then we're gonna find out where we were weak and shore that up, get more people to join us and come back next season very strong. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a long term game that we're playing. Because I know when we first started doing it, everyone was like, well, how long is it going to take? Like, when's it going to go past written in a law? What, what's going to happen next? And and we're looking at it like this is, we're all super passionate about it. This is a long-term game. We're in it um, because this bill is a is like a gateway bill. Well, I was told by people with experience, I'm talking about really good experience. I'm not going to say who they were, but let's just say they're professionals. And they said a bill like this would take years. And they said that, that it would be, common to hire a lobbyist for $280,000 that might not even produce a draft bill. Well, when we were able to get a draft bill the very first year, it was phenomenal. And, and so we saw that support, we saw that passion, but we also start to realize who's a powerful lobby group in California. And we realized the Catholic Church ha is a very organized lobby group and they organize and they tell the uh, lot legislators that they better not vote for SB 360 or they won't be voted for. So there's a lot of strategy and there's a lot of power and it's back and forth. But overall, with all of those um, things being said, you could say that SB 360 and the cause is years ahead. Who, who would have thought that in two years of effort, we would have passed the Senate 35 to five? And that's what, need, that's what people need to know to be encouraged, that that means that there are people just as passionate about protecting children as we are. Yeah. Um, I know you want to say, yeah, let's get, let's get Karen in here too, because uh, you've been want, here since day one. Yeah. 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 I want to say this too, that if you lived in 1848 when there was slavery, there were churches that supported slavery. There were churches, there were people against it. The church might have said, you better be for slavery. And think about how long it took to change that. Culture takes a long time to change, but it does change, but it takes work. And we're glad it changed. We're glad there's not slavery, even though it's incremental. So that's why we're not giving up. We know it takes time. And we're becoming a part of history just like we don't like slavery we don't like child abuse and we love seeing the change we love seeing people realize what it does to children how traumatic it is it affects their lives forever it um, breaks down our society our families and just like our attorney general surgeon general i mean excuse me our surgeon general <laughs> nadine, nadine burke, harris. burke harris we love her she is on the right track, looking to our children, protecting our future, helping them out and changing people's minds. If we had everybody saying, let's protect our kids, it's worth it. Um, we love them. We want our kids to come to us and tell us. That would change. We wouldn't need laws because everybody would be telling their senators and assemblymen, it didn't matter what their clergymen told them, they'd say, you know what? We want our kids protected first. And that's what we want to do. We want to get everybody excited and on board, changing history, changing lives, making the future. Yeah. 
I think that's something we definitely noticed in the last, uh, especially the last week, but over the last several months is that how, like, like on your point again, is the Catholic Church is an extremely powerful group. Yes. Um, they were the first, one of the first ones to oppose us for the bill when we had, uh, went to the hearing. And uh, they've been ruthless in lying to their own members and, uh, and just saying that we're attacking religious freedom and confession when that's, that's not the case. We're, we're trying to get them to stop covering up child abuse. Well, what, one thing I wanted to point out is that I think we're being very successful because we're doing this with giving people dignity, giving them respect. We're um, not going in and expecting the worst. We go in expecting the best. And I have not been disappointed at any time with the dignity and the respect and the logical uh, discussions that have been taking place. And I think if we as a whole community continue to show dignity and understanding to one another, the importance of this issue will prevail. Because who does not want to protect the most innocent among us? Who, who does not want to enact a law that will do the most good to protect children, stop a cycle, it, it'll, it'll prevent child abuse because the abuser will be stopped and identified, and it will start the healing of the abuse survivors themselves. So we really don't need to be upset, frustrated. Um, we just need to continue to show respect to people. When we're given the opportunity to present our side of the story, we just try very hard to articulate it. And that approach has really brought about fantastic results, and so we highly recommend it that you give people dignity and you show them respect, most of the time they're gonna do the same to you. Most of the time, yeah. And I think it's built, with all the work that we're doing, is built a lot of, um, even people who have no idea what's going on, um, people are wanting to get involved. Yes. Which is really exciting. People don't realize that in California, the clergy are already mandated reporters. Right. Even some senators go like, why do you need to change it? Because they're already mandated reporters. They didn't realize that when people took religions to court, that is when they claimed clergy penitent privilege so that certain documents wouldn't be presented. So, oh dang, I well, just I, I got to point out that. It, what, what we're trying to point out on our website is that we now have many California judges who have actually ruled to limit clergy penitent privilege. So the, the idea is, is we feel the Constitution is on our side. We feel that the judiciary in California is on our side. So let's just get this together. Let's, let's stop these decades long arguments. You know, we go back to the movie Spotlight, the investigative reporters in the Boston Globe and the exposure that came out back then, um, what has happened to enacting those laws and actually doing something about what those investigative reporters were able to successfully expose. And since that time, we've had grand jury reports after grand jury reports to say that the problem exists and legislatures, legislators can do something about it by adjusting or enacting laws similar to what SB 360 is, is going to do. And since the, uh, the courts are agreeing with it, um, the results are positive all around the world. They're coming to the same conclusion. We can at least limit that clergy penitent privilege so that exponentially child abuse is reported. It's a huge benefit to the uh, whole community to stop child abuse and to heal those that were victims of that crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And we're actually, you're right, we're going along a lot quicker than I thought. Because even with like the CCLA, I consulted with them when we first started. And I was like, oh yeah, we look at the progress we've made. And they're like, and that's that's fast. It that's is. It's really fast. Well, they they just told me the other day, one of the paralegals, he was really surprised that the bill got the traction it did. And, you know, we have to say we're kind of unprepared as a small group to continue to... Um, go forward and the more success we have the more organizing the more work we have to do but that's all this is the public and other people need to join and, and and get into what we're doing and with a large community of people writing their senators sending emails saying they support this bill 
we can at least balance what the Catholic Church does with their um, lobby movement and their 140,000 emails that they delivered to the Capitol. Yeah. See, we have to week. we have to match that, and and hopefully we have to surpass surpass that. But we're at the stage where we really need the public to come on board and weigh in on this issue. Yeah. Yeah. And we are we are the mouthpiece right now. <laughs> we're yeah. like, we're like, yeah. hey, what's we need up? a little more than this. Yeah. Right? Okay. No, Let's get like the word out. <laughs> Do you want to join us? Yeah. Are you a teachers association? Are you a child association? Someone that helps children in any way? If we band together and talk about it, if you have followers, we have followers and become a giant group and educate people. Who doesn't want to help children? Why don't the churches want to prevent this so much? If they said, we want to protect children, that's what churches are supposed to do. Be good things, be motivating things. Reporting an abuser stops them from abusing again. Keeping it secret does not even help the abuser. They won't change. So think about the kids, report it. Tell your kids to report it. Be happy when they report it. Congratulate them and work for educating the public that it needs to happen. And if you're interested in the, in the deeper uh, subject on SCAR's website, on the legislation page and throughout it, it refers to academic papers. And, and it's very interesting that there is a institutional cultural response to child abuse. And what these experts and psychologists and all that money spent in Australia, corporations, institutions will try to protect their image over protecting child abuse survivors. Every time. And, and it's a cultural response, and that's why it's even beyond laws. And you say, what are you talking about? Well, how about a common term that was maybe extreme at the time, but it, it talked about the rape culture. It talked about when a woman would be blamed for the kind of clothes that she was wearing, or, or it, was she flirting? And that's part of stigmatizing the person who was reporting the crime. And in, in the institution we came from, the way that that was accomplished was when a child abuse survivor was thinking about reporting to the police, a line, a, a, a line would come up or a, a statement, you don't want to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. Yeah. So, so you that is... make God look bad. And the, the yeah. translation of that is that's protecting the image of the institution above stopping that crime, having the abuser dealt with by the authorities letting that abuser heal properly and it's all there folks it's it's laid out it's black and white it's it's not it's scars is simply repeating and publicizing what many many people have been doing for years and snap is an organization along those lines and so what we need to do is come together as a community we need to unite we need to find these these solutions and we need to support the legislators give them the uh, political clout to say my constituents want this law passed that's exactly what we need yeah yeah absolutely so we can find out more on scars.net it's s-c-a-a dot org dot org, org. Dot org. Okay, yeah. i'll have the link below <laughs> um the california civil liberties advocacy is dot uh, i think that's dot net i'll leave the link down there too but um also leaving a comment down below and, and saying if there's anything that you can do or, or on Instagram or Facebook, wherever you're watching this, let us know because moving this, this is an opportunity in history for all of us. I mean, we're primarily ex Jehovah's Witnesses, but this affects Mormons, Scientologists, any, any cult like religion that. Any religion, let Any religion. It, whatever, any organization. Any institution. Any yeah. institution. Business, and, everything. And we want Senator Hill's words to. The bill wasn't pulled, it's simply on pause. So we're gonna go back um, late October, early September, and we're gonna start exactly what we've done for the last two years. We're gonna work with Senator Hill, we're gonna support that bill. And we, we just really hope that we can come back with hundreds of thousands of people saying that, weighing in saying, yes, I support SB 360. Yeah. And I wanna say thank you, Senator Hill, for presenting this bill. It is awesome. We thank you for your support of children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hill. Um, we'll have links down below to everything. Any comments or questions, let us know. 
and then we're hoping to see you at, at many more meetups and then especially at the Capitol lobbying in person and if you can't make it if you're across the country emails letters we have templates that are done for you you can just cop copy and cut and paste your own information in there to make it easy um, but we're all we're all available for, for questions too so links to everything down below and um, if you want to have any other ideas of how you can get involved just ask us we're here thanks we right. we'll do this together thank you <laughs> oh my god thanks these guys we're making history. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's good. Cool. We'll see you soon, brothers and sisters.